Hey there, Delmarva. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday afternoon for watching Coast Life. We are your hosts. I'm Paige Marley. I'm Leah Rizzo. And yes, you made it another day. Here Woo! we are. You made it through Monday. That is an accomplishment yes. in itself. <laughs> and we, just, we feel like we're looking kind of tan today. Yeah. We're really enjoying that. Are we overthinking this? Are we being a little vain or do we look tan? <laughs> maybe we're crazy. Maybe. But <laughs> sort of speaking of that and, and maybe kind of getting into cosmetic territory, I we always it. like to start the show off by talking about things that you might be talking about mm -hmm. and something that Delaware is talking about is cosmetic surgery. Yeah, we are. <laughs> mm -hmm. We topped the list of states when it came to cosmetic surgery searches. Now that is per capita, which mm -hmm. may have factored into sort of boosting us to the top, but Maryland came in number three. I may be half those searches, just <laughs> maybe a little skewed. <laughs> it's probably me. But I think it is something that not a lot of people are talking about out loud. Yeah. But you're all a little curious. Yeah. And I mean, I think there's no doubt that social media has played a big part in that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw the Barbie movie over the weekend. Yes. You see a lot of perfect looking people in a movie like that. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. And you know, so something that Leah. She makes fun of me right now because <laughs> I love I love all things plastic surgery and work done. I don't have any, not that it's, I'll tell you when I do. I'm not scared, okay, <laughs> about telling you. But I'm so, I love to focus on it. And something Gen Z's been talking about is the side profile. Ugh. And, it's, <laughs> and I never was self-conscious about my side profile until Gen Z started talking about it. I know. And they're doing so well in uh, so many ways to sort of be more open-minded yes. and progressive and, and how they socialize. But that is one that feels like a step back yeah. when it comes like, who picked a side profile as something to worry about? I never knew I didn't like the side of my nose. And now I'm like Googling every day, nose jobs, nose jobs. And I'm like, stop. Yes. Close stop the phone. It. Stop. I know. So yes. you're beautiful the way you are. But if you, you know, want to get some work yeah, done. Yeah, no. It is not a judgment. No. If you want to get some work done, you, you feel more confident in mm -hmm. a certain, looking a certain way, feeling a certain way. That is that is up to you, completely mm -hmm. your choice. I just yep. I thought it was interesting yeah. that our favorite two places, Delaware and Maryland, were in the hey. top three. Virginia, what are you doing? I don't remember where they fell. No, not that high. <laughs> I don't know if they were that They're high. They're all cool and They're getting ready for the pony swim. They're yes, like, I'm yes. good. <laughs> That's so funny. All good things yes. happening in Virginia. I love that. Another thing that we kind of wanted to talk about that I saw pop up online, we love new dating terms, yes. don't we? There's always something new cropping up. <gasps> so glad I'm not in the dating world. <laughs> Let's see. There's been zombieing, caspering. Uh, oh. I think the new one now is ghost lighting. So there's ghosting and there's gaslighting. I'm guessing it's a mix of those. Yes, it is a mix of the okay. two. So ghosting, if you don't know, ghosting is basically when somebody just completely up and quits talking to you. Mm -hmm. No no goodbye, yep. no, hey, sorry, I'm not interested. Just completely cuts contact. Ugh. Gaslighting is when somebody like ramps you up and then is like, I had nothing to do with it. You're crazy, you're emotional, like it's all your fault. Oh yeah, so I can see where you're going with this. So ghostlighting okay. is when somebody kind of cuts all contact and then when you reach out and you're like, hey, what happened? They blame you. It's all your fault. It's all, oh, you're crazy. You're this. And then they'll kind of circle back and do like the love bombing and all of that. I think it falls mm -mm. into much more of that like narcissist territory. Listen, listen, we have been there. Yeah. <laughs> it's toxic. Don't let it happen. Yeah. Don't let you it happen. You see the signs. Gosh. It's it's so it's become so normal I know. to just ghost, to just gaslight, to ghost light. And it just makes me sad for like younger Paige, younger Leah. I yeah. don't know if you went through it like that, but like. I mean, ghosting honestly doesn't bother me the way that it seems to bother a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've also, I've done it. I will come sure. clean. I've done it because I think if you're just, you know, especially as you get older, mm -hmm. You're both adults. If you're not feeling the spark, mm -hmm. you're just not feeling the spark. And yeah. that's okay. And you don't necessarily need an explanation for that. That's true, too. I think I've been the opposite, where maybe I've been a little too blunt. I've kind of been known just to send a quick text, like, hey, just we're not, not, not interested. I've done both. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's if it's a two-year relationship, and right. then you, yes. you cut it off that no, way. No, no, no. I think when you're just you're yeah. starting to feel someone out, and mm -hmm. then, like, I've been ghosted, and it didn't hurt my feelings. I was yeah. like, yeah. That tracks. I'm way too sensitive. I'm way too sensitive for that. <laughs> I've met me too. I trust me too. <laughs> no. no. Well, hey, don't do that. Just be mature. I, I think there's a, there's a happy medium yes. of just being honest <laughs> and then just take take the take it and roll with it. 
Yeah. Plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> and uh, one more thing we kind of wanted to get to, because mm -hmm. this is something that I think a lot of people notice with their friends, mm -hmm. a lot of people will notice with their family. Is there something that just, it always becomes someone's entire personality oh, yeah. trait? I'm so guilty of this. <laughs> <laughs> and it, as soon as we talked about it this morning, I was like, oh, I'm so, it's cringy. I probably do this where I find a new show or a book or mm -hmm. a food and it's my whole personality. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, when they get in a new relationship, that relationship yeah. becomes their whole personality. Astrology, that's a big one that becomes your whole personality. Crystals. Oh, it's because I'm a Capri Sun. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm not mean, it's yes. just my star sign. <laughs> <laughs> that, one, that one gets me. I know for me it's whatever TV show or mm -hmm. like movie that I've just watched. I'm like, that will become, not necessarily that's all I'll talk about, mm -hmm. but like I will sort of, especially if I like relate to the characters in it, I'm like, that slowly yes. becomes my personality. <laughs> That's really, a good point. Like I know Jess from New Girl is one that like the more I watch it, the more you end up kind of talking like <laughs> Jess by the end of the week. <laughs> You're so good at that. Yeah, you are the real life Jess. Do you think it has to do, this is psychological page coming through. Mm. Do you think it has to do with like comfort shows, comfort foods? Because I sometimes feel like I get in these like my comfort movies, my comfort shows, and I watch them, watch them, watch them, and then I'll find a new one, and then I'm yeah. stuck on that one, that one, that one. There may be something to, to that sort of level of comfort yeah. with something familiar like that. And, and it just, it makes you feel good. I don't know if it's also just something to, to talk about. Yeah. And maybe a lot of people, and especially maybe in a world of social media mm -hmm. where we socialize less on our own and a lot more digitally, yeah. that like maybe we've sort of forgotten how to have conversations that aren't about the whatever it is you're obsessing over at the time. That's a good point. Okay. I don't know. I, I think we could all work on that a little bit. Yes. Definitely guilty <laughs> about this. I'm pretty sure I made a joke the other day um, where I was like, my whole personality is uh, I used to work for an HVAC company because I just talk about it <laughs> all the time. Or like Harry Potter. I just, uh, and whenever yeah. I meet someone new, I'm like, do you like Harry Potter? And if they're like, yeah, I'm like, what house are you? And they're like, okay, yeah. not that much. <laughs> right. Relax. And you're like, okay, dial it back, Sorry. dial it back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Well, if you would like to make Coast Life your whole new personality trait, that's fine because we've got a great show coming your way. We're going to be checking in with what's going on at the Clear Space Theater. And it's Tuesday. That means we are helping you get home safely. We are going to be learning more self-protection tips from our friends at Seaside Krav Maga in Lewis. And we know we have so many talented artists and photographers in our area. We've got the chance to sit down with one of those incredibly talented photographers. June Rose Butcher will be joining us later on this show. It's all coming your way when Coast Life gets back. Coast Life is brought to you by BB Healthcare, Coastal Comfort Heating and Air Conditioning, Preston Automotive Group, and Sh <laughs> Coast Life, we know the official start of summer is right around the corner, but the hot weather is already here, which means we're seeing a little bit more humidity, and that means it is affecting our hair. That is why our field correspondent, Maya Henry, is checking out Rehoboth Beauty Boutique to keep your hair looking healthy and shiny and beautiful all summer long. As you go out to the beach this summer, it's important not just to protect your skin, but your hair as well. Alexis Kaiser from Rehoboth Beauty Boutique shows us ways to keep our hair flourishing during the summer heat. When your hair and skin need a little more love than you have to offer, they are here to help. Alexis is one of the salon's hairstylists, and we knew she was the perfect person to give us tips to prepare our hair for the summer season. Well, a sun hat is perfect for that UV protection. Um, a headscarf also is a good way to do that. Bathing cap for the pool. I know it's not the cutest thing in the world, but you can get a nice bathing cap so that you don't get chlorine in your hair. Uh, also, if you uh, wash your hair with clear water and then put it back in a braid, that'll protect it as well. If covering your hair isn't your style, there are ways to hydrate your hair to get it to look gorgeous from the inside out a good leave-in conditioner. They make sprays, they make creams for whatever type of hair that you have. Hair masks are good as well. Also a hydrating oil is good if you have coarse hair, frizzy hair, just put the oil in either wet or dry and that works as well to protect it. Make sure it's a good heat and UV protectant. Alexis even let me in on her personal hair product recommendations. So we have my new favorite product is our Mr. Smith Primer. It's a spray-in. Uh, it is UV protectant, heat protectant. You spray it in your hair before you blow dry your hair. You can also leave it in wet. Great new product, makes your hair soft. For damaged hair or hair that needs a little bit of a pick-me-up, the salon's leave-in conditioner can bring those strands back to life. 
Right, so this is also one of my favorites. It's a Mr. Smith leave-in conditioner. It's a cream conditioner, so it's a little bit heavier. It's perfect for people with damaged hair because it does repair your hair as well as protect it. So this is a really good one for summer. For a nice and sleek look for the summer, Alexis shows us a natural option that may fit your fancy. Also have our Bob High Hydrating Mask. This is a perfect one. It's all natural. It'll repair your hair. It'll keep it nice and soft and smooth for the summer. As you enjoy the sun this summer, don't forget to find a hair routine to protect your hair during the harsh summer heat. Well, Maya, it looks like we know where to go to keep our hair beautiful and elegant all summer long. Don't go anywhere because there is more Coast Life coming your way. Coast Life, we love celebrating all the beautiful scenes on yes. the coast, <laughs> and one person who is just magnificent <laughs> at capturing those scenes is with us today. We have June Rose Fletcher, also known as JR, an amazing photographer. Thank you for being here. Yes, well, I'm flattered to be invited to uh, speak to you about my work. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, so photography is something that I, I love mm. to hear how people get into photography. Yes. Is it sort of a calling? Is it something that you've always known that you loved or wanted to do? Or is it something that you just kind of picked up one day? Well, actually, that's um, a very important question. Um, uh, we grew up here as a sailing and maritime family. And actually, I was uh, I've been taking pictures since I was a young girl, but also painting. Nice. Uh, sailing and maritime scenes. Beautiful. And I knew I wanted to pursue photography uh, because of an opportunity to study at Delaware Tech okay. uh, and community college uh, here in Georgetown. Awesome. Yeah, so all my life. Wow. Yes. I, and I know you mentioned maritime. That's some of the beautiful photographs you take. What yeah. are some of your favorite scenes to capture, uh, especially locally? Oh, that's a, uh, that's also an excellent question. Well, actually, um, what I've been, you know, capturing and um, studying, if you will, mm -hmm. and observing, you know, I've been, you know, you know, sailing, you mm -hmm. know, um, and ships. Um, also, as an active sailor, uh, so I was always impressed. You know, as a young girl, and we were um, um, involved in the sailing community growing up on the Delaware Bay and also at the Lewis Yacht Club. Uh, so as a sailor, I was connected to the, to the experience, yeah. you know, physically, you know, mentally, mm -hmm. and also spiritually. Um, so as I've grown my work over the years, I, um, uh, you know, in the sailing community and racing, I've also have been capturing uh, shipping, okay. you know, in maritime in the general uh, Delmarva area, Chesapeake Bay, Delaware Bay, Rehoboth Bay. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. And I think you I see something. I do too. Yeah. yeah. I see a little a certain of a picture. Frame. Oh, <laughs> right. And this us. is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. This is was a, a photograph I did, which is more about, you know, the earth and, you know, preservation with the uh, Great Cypress Swamp. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a student at Delaware Tech, um, uh, there was, you know, there was an internship program for the communications, while this one was um, involving the Delaware Wildlands. Okay. And this is where I was beginning. I had already studied black and white film. Mm. Of course, that has, you know, changed into, yes. you know, widespread <laughs> digital. Uh, but my first, one of my first photographs, you know, as a student, you know, and learning, you know, everything about, you know, photographic arts, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot more than, you know, just picking up a camera, right? Well, what I uh, decided to do, and working with Delaware Wildlands, Ooh, I, you know, beautiful. organized a tour, and working with Sussex County Administration, I was um, charged with uh, documenting uh, preservation districts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now this is a departure from the maritime, but there is a relationship because we're talking about you know wetlands and the, yeah. you know, the general waterways and watersheds. And this is um, the Great Cypress Swamp, and this deer skull was actually at the base of this tree. <sighs> And this was as uh, far back as 2007. Wow. So I, I understand and that sort of spiritual connection that you have yeah. with the yeah. art that you produce. Right, yeah, very, very deep, very deep. And so this, I thought I'd bring this because this was really my first presentation. Yes, there are the classroom projects. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, but this was also involved uh, with the Sussex County Administration in their mm -hmm. preservation brochure, a three panel brochure. Wow. Yes. That's incredible. Yeah. That's so, yeah. it's so amazing that yeah. you found that, that you were able to yeah. capture that. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Oh gosh, yeah, and this was also in an exhibit uh, uh, last year mm -hmm. with uh, the state of Delaware. 
Great. So you, you have an exhibit going on, right? Uh, yes, yes. And that exhibit, um, we just had the open house yesterday mm -hmm. at Dover um, at the House of Coffee. Mm -hmm. um, and this um, is because of my fifth grant. I've wow. been a grant writer, and I won my first grant in 2013. Oh, congratulations. With, yeah, yeah I know. Pretty awesome, isn't <laughs> it? Yes. Yeah, I just, yeah, well, I have um, learned that I'm actually very good at grant writing. But the program with the Delaware Division of the Arts, also funded with the National Endowment for the Arts, mm -hmm. uh, they produce these grant programs for individual artists. Wow. So I just thought, well, I'm, I'm already doing pretty well. Um, you know, when I graduated, you know, from Delaware Tech in 2010. Uh, with an art award as mm -hmm. well, and plus I also won awards when I was younger mm -hmm. with Cape and Lupin School District. But long and short, should I put this down now? You can whatever you want to yeah, do, okay. if you're comfortable with. All it. right. <laughs> and uh, well, long and short, the uh, grant program in 2013, I, I entered and submitted a portfolio, and these are very competitive. They get you know two or three hundred applicants, and they accepted me. Wow! Oh. Congratulations. Yes, yeah. and that was, um, and I had my first uh, you know solo exhibit in 2013. That's great. Uh, with my maritime photographs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. With the Delaware pilotage and mm -hmm. you know um, and competitive sailing. Great. And you mentioned something too about ways people can get involved. You mentioned a camera drive. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Oh well, actually, the camera drive is related to okay. the work that I've grown mm -hmm. um, because I was invited to teach. Okay. Perfect. In community programs, and then of course the you know um, the emergency, the pandemic emergency, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, nearly derailed um, my program. Lots mm -hmm. of arts programs. Uh, yes. I mean, there was a lot. I mean, yeah. really devastating impacts. Mm -hmm. Well, long and short, I became credentialed with the Delaware Institute for Arts and Education while you know continuing you know to do my body of work. You know, and I've, I've been published. Um, you know, in sailing magazines, Delaware Beach Life, hoping uh -huh. to do more. Uh, but then I was invited to teach nice. and work with at-risk youth. So the camera drive, though, people can still donate some cameras? Uh, yes. Okay, how can mm -hmm. they do that? Well, what they can do is they can just reach out to me. Okay. Um, I'm, still I'm still working on uh, locations for collections, but right sure. now what I'd like to do is just have people reach out to me, mm -hmm. you know, directly. Um, they can also find me and, you know, and do a search, mm -hmm. you know, and find me even through Delaware Division of the Arts because I'm also in an artist roster program as oh, well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, you can locate me pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Sounds good. And uh, one more question for you yes. before we let you go, if that's okay. Yeah. I think your story is interesting because you've been involved in photography yes. since yeah. you were younger, you said, but yes. you went oh, to yeah. school and graduated as an adult. So do you just have any advice to anybody who, whether they're young or older, any time yeah. in their life, if they want to pursue photography, any advice you have for them? Oh, that, uh, well, there's, there really is a, a, lot, to, uh, a lot to share sure. about that. But what you need to do is you need to look at it as a business. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need to study. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really, you know, it's, it's really important to um, see if you can get in, in, you know, into a degree program, um, and especially at Delaware Tech. They have a comprehensive program. They're very proud of the program at the Owens campus and also a program at the Terry campus. Uh, but to look at it as a business, but take as many um, uh, creative arts classes, yeah. uh, writing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, film, video, uh, creative writing, you know, any advanced classes that might be, uh, that are available at Delaware Tech as well, mm -hmm. if you have the, you know, the time and the yeah. opportunity because I was able to do that and when I graduated in 2010 and in just two or three years I was able to write a grant wow. so you also need to be able to present your work true and that's one of my strengths um, I'm I produce all these exhibits I do all the press material wow. and provide all the information that anybody needs so they can you know you know come to the exhibits and also you know hopefully you know um, you know buy a few pieces well you're so talented yeah. this yes. has been incredible we can't wait to yeah. see what else you Having produce you. yes oh, <laughs> right well well, well, there's you know there's opportunities out there, mm -hmm. and well, if anybody's interested, you know, at the House of Coffee in Dover, mm -hmm. it's uh, right in town, mm -hmm. you know, on Lockerman Street. Yep. You know, uh, she also uh, Kristen, who's the owner, supports a lot of uh, art uh, artists, mm -hmm. awesome. and and this is our fourth collaboration. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you know, come see you know yeah. visit the gallery and excellent coffee as yes. well. Coffee and I love and, art. And, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> That's yes. really a great afternoon. Yeah. Well, like we said, you're so talented, yeah. but I think you're also inspiring a lot of people. Yeah. So so thank you for being yeah. here today and sharing your art with yeah. us. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Thank you for having me. Of course. You're of course. Welcome. Of course. Yes. We just have a lot more to share with you all, so don't go anywhere. Coast Life will be right back. You're watching Coast Life, and today I am super excited to announce that downtown Rehoboth has something special to add to their list of restaurants. Bethany Blues, also known as Downtown Blues in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. 
Think about the best barbecue in Delmarva. How about Rehoboth Beach? Look no further because Downtown Blues will have your taste buds begging for more. Bethany Blues now has a total of three locations. Bethany, Lewis, and now Rehoboth. Jessica Nathan tells us why Rehoboth was the perfect spot for Downtown Blues. Well, our owners had been looking at Rehoboth for a while, and I think what really pushed us over the edge to say yes was when this particular location became available. The landlords approached uh, Monty and said, are you interested in the original Nicola building because they went up the highway? And honestly, it's the first time I did not see him hesitate at all. He said, we're diving into downtown Rehoboth feet first, so let's do it. Nestled on 8th and 1st Street in Rehoboth Beach, you'll find the staff of Downtown Blues waiting for you to stop by to give their award-winning barbecue a try. So we smoke fresh every day, and all of the sauces and all of our rubs, everything are things that our owners have perfected over the years. We've changed a little bit here and there. They did a lot of research when we originally opened the Bethany location, but for sure, our barbecue is spot on. Our brisket is what people talk about. We have our St. Louis ribs, which is a special rub that we do here that we think is unique. Baby backs are a bit more traditional, but for sure, our barbecue. While Bethany Blues is best known for their outstanding barbecue, they also have other unique dishes that make them an ultimate fan favorite. Mac and cheese is a fan favorite. It does. We've done catering for years and we always end up with a double starch buffet. Mac and cheese and potatoes, please. Um, so, and I would say we, honestly, what's been really popular a lot recently is our desserts. Our pastry chef has been knocking it out of the park and she's doing new things all the time. So it's interesting, over the years, people were so full and they were like, oh, no thank you, no thank you. But now people are saving room because desserts are starting to become a thing at Bethany Blues. For those looking for a casual, fine dining, lunch and dinner experience, Downtown Blues is the perfect place for the whole family to enjoy. In this specific location, um, our chef Juan is really excited to bring a new southern twist on some items that we don't have in the other two. So you'll find some things. We're having a comfort corner that will be a seasonal thing every day on our special sheet like shrimp and grits. He's doing an apple brine pork chop, which is really, really delicious. And he's uh, excited about his birria tacos. And we can't forget the people who love to end the day by winding down with a nice drink. We're a bourbon bar and we go down to Kentucky every year and we pick out a bunch of single barrels. We have three brand new ones. So any of our cocktails on our menu are gonna have our private select bourbons in them. And I would say our bartenders make maybe a hundred smoked old fashions a night. It's by far the most popular and it's delicious. If that wasn't enough to make your mouth water, after the break, Chef Juan Hernandez is gonna show us some of his specialty dishes. There's more Coast Life on the way. Before the break, Jessica told us why Bethany Blues is number one. And right beside me is the man behind the magic, Juan Hernandez. What's up, Juan? Not much, just, you know, another day. All right, yeah. so you have these two beautiful dishes in front of me, and I watched you create these so fast. <laughs> you, you are amazing at your job. Thank you, thank you You're very welcome. much, thank you. So what is this one right here? So this is our birria tacos. Um, as you saw, you know, the whole process, homemade tortillas every, um, every day. Uh, beef pretty much braised um, and smoked. And we have a little bit of our skite style mm -hmm. cream of corn um, and our consomme. You know, just garnished with a little bit of radish and a little cilantro. So I see this yeah. sauce right here. So do you dip it inside of it? Yeah, yeah, the whole idea is, you know, to grab it and dip it and, you know, just Go at it however you want, yeah. All right, can I try it? Yeah, go for it. All right. Guys, I'm super excited to try <laughs> this. I've been smiling the whole time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, this was delicious. I love all the flavors, all the colors. You definitely did the darn thing right there. Thank you. So what do we have over here, Juan? Oh, so right over here we have our shrimp and grits. It's one of our uh, staples right now. We have uh, some grits that we made early in the morning. We have some shrimp tossed in with chorizo, a little bit of tomato compote, and a little bit of uh, just clam juice, and just finish it off with a little bit of uh, spinach. Did you create this? Yes. Wow, what made you think to put all these flavors together? 
Uh, these dishes have been made in other restaurants. I've seen them different interpretations, but you know, I wanted to make it for blues. You know, our chorizo, we smoked it in-house. Um, you know, like I said, we took what we have, our pork trimmings and everything like that. We had, you know, ground every other day and we smoked it as needed. And the tomato compote, you know, everybody kind of uses a tomato base for shrimp and grits. And, you know, I, I was like, just add a little bit more flavor to it and you know, right. taking a dish that everybody kind of does have this interpretation and make it into my interpretation. And before I try this, how long have you been with Bethany Blues or just cooking in general? Cooking in general, um, you know, I was in the kitchen when I was uh, 14. Mama brought me in there and now I haven't left. All right, well, I'm glad you stuck with it because I'm super, super stoked to try this one right here. That is delicious. I was kind of fearful about all the flavors, <laughs> but that is perfect one. Thank you. Thank you so much. So what are the hours that you guys are open? Uh, our hours of operation are from 11.30 to 10. We will be serving uh, lunch and dinner. And then after 10, we will be serving late night from uh, 10 to 12. And you know, maybe we'll stay open a little longer. We'll see. Right. Well, you would definitely see me stopping by because <laughs> this, this fit my fancy. Thank you so much, Juan, yeah. for interviewing with us and getting to show everyone your creating no dishes. Thank you. There's Thank more Coast Life on the way. Today on Coast Life, I'm introducing you to two very special guests and make sure when I introduce them, you give them a whole congratulations. Today, I have with me Chef Shalisa and Victoria. You both are with the Kitchen School at the Food Bank of Delaware. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Of course. So you've probably heard of the Food Bank, but have you heard of the Kitchen School? Chef, can you tell us a little bit about it for people who haven't heard of it? Okay, so the Kitchen School is a culinary program that teaches uh, adults with disabilities culinary and kitchen skills to get them ready for the workforce. Amazing, and the reason I said wish congratulations is because the first class of the Kitchen School graduated recently. Yay! Yes, it's very exciting. So Victoria, you were a student at the Kitchen School. Yes. Before I hear about your, your experience in the school, can you just tell us what made you want to do this in the first place? Um, I love cooking and I wanted to move forward on getting a job and like more, get more skills. Okay, perfect. And so take us through too, you wanted to learn to cook more, get more skills, so then you joined the kitchen school. What was your experience like? Walk us through that. Oh, it was, it was amazing with Chef Shalisa and our job coach, Jonathan and uh, Miss Murray. Beautiful. What did you learn? Can you tell us some of the things that they, they taught you? <laughs> um, we did surf safe on like how to properly clean the area without contaminating and the temperatures that each food was supposed to be at. And okay. I'm delighted from you, Chef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chef, take us through too as the teacher, as someone who was instructing them, mm -hmm. what was um, like for you? Can you take us through your experience at the kitchen school? Okay, so it was my first experience um, with teaching adults with a uh, disability, so I really wasn't sure what to expect. Um, so I did build a curriculum around, um, you know, I did my research and tried to build a curriculum around it. Um, but these guys were so great and so awesome in the kitchen. Once I got them in, um, they just pulled from me every bit of knowledge that I had. Um, it was it was easy to teach them because their drive and they were excited to learn and, and they caught on to everything. Um, like Victoria said, we did serve safe, but um, we did a lot of scratch cooking. We made homemade pasta uh, from scratch, biscuits from scratch, everything um, that I did was try to instill in them the, um, the, the basics of cooking and where cooking comes from. And, and we just uh, grew on that uh, every day that they were in class. That's incredible. And mm -hmm. so I picked up on something Victoria said, where you said you also have a job coach. So what was the goal of this and what's next for the graduating class? You taught them how to cook a little better, taught them some skills. Mm -hmm. What happens next? 
Okay, so once we, um, so we just don't teach them the culinary mm -hmm. part of it. The culinary is just a piece of it. Um, we also taught them, you know, the cleaning aspect of the kitchen, um, how to properly store foods and different things of that nature. Um, so they all graduated with a Serve Safe certification, um, which is valuable in the industry. Um, and then once we do that, we try, um, we teach them, you know, to do their resumes, to do applications, and then we try to place them in the workforce. And so we part with different companies um, like we partnered with Harrington Casino um, we partnered with grains on the rocks and they took on some students and employed them and um, and that's the goal the goal is to get them placed into different you know job opportunities um, so that they can have um, you know in, um, income security. Um, we know that, you know, they do receive some sorts of benefits and things like that, but you know, today the economy, everything's getting high. And not only that, they deserve to be a part of society and work along. And they're the best workers because they come to work, they come to work on time, they came to class, they came to class on time. And that was a big part of it, to make sure that they came to class, came to class on time, they learned the information, and then we were able to place them with, you know, employees and say, hey, these, not only are they good students, but they'll also be great workers. That's so incredible that you didn't just say, okay, here's a couple skills, good luck. You no. know, you really worked with people and going through that. Victoria, can you take me through your experience with that, how this has helped you? Um, did you were you having any trouble finding a job cooking beforehand? Uh, yeah, okay. I've tried many jobs, but they didn't want to take me because of my stature. Oh, wow. And then thanks to Jonathan, Chef Shalisa, and Miss Marie, I got into Grains on the Rocks. Okay, mm -hmm. Grain on the Rocks too is delicious. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to go and try some of the food that you've been uh, cooking up back there. Definitely, mm -hmm. that's really incredible. So not incredible that you you had those struggles at first, but great that you, there was a program like this. Is there something you'd want to say to people who maybe it's an adult with a disability who they're having trouble finding a job too? Mm -hmm. Any words of encouragement or advice? Just follow your dreams. That's great. Easy enough. Follow your dreams. Great. So if someone's watching this. They want to get involved in this great thing that you do. Mm -hmm. How can they get involved? When's the next class? Just take us through that. Okay, so the Milford site is actually building a new uh, food bank in Milford, um, which is great, and it's all you know, it's coming along very well. So our next Milford Kitchen School will not be until February. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, if you want to get involved in that, um, I advise you to go to the website, which is www.fbde.com. Um, and um, just click on the link because um, we have the culinary school, we have the kitchen school. Um, the difference uh, between is the kitchen school is, you know, based for adults with disabilities. And once they click on the link, it'll give them all the information that they need to come and be a part of the class. Um, and which we're really excited because out of the eight students that we had come in, um, eight graduated. All eight of them passed their Serve Safe certification, and six of them are successfully working right now. Wow. That is incredible. Mm -hmm. You guys really are changing lives. Yeah, absolutely. That is great. Well, congratulations, Victoria. Thank you. And congratulations to you Thank and you. all of your students. Thank you. It's fantastic. So make sure, yeah, you go online if you are someone maybe struggling to find a career in this or you know someone who is. Uh, heading online is, is really just seems like the easiest way to get involved. Oh, yes, it is. Great. Well, thank you both so much for being here and sharing your stories. We have more stories to tell, so don't go anywhere. Coast Life will be right back. All right, I hope you've been practicing because, Leah, it's Tuesday. And uh, you know what that means. It means we're getting you home safely with our friends at Seaside Krav Maga. We've been showing you new tips every Tuesday. We also have all of them on our website, coastlife.com. But it's time. It's time for another tip. So take a look at this week's Get Home Safely tip with Seaside Krav Maga. Hi, I'm Ted. And I'm Chris from Seaside Krav Maga. This week we're going to talk about things you do that put you at risk and how to modify your behavior so that you can get home safe. Two guys are just, you know, smoking some whatever and they, they don't say anything to each other because it's pre-planned. They just start separating. And you're coming down the funnel, you know, it's a killing field. It's not a place you want to be. When you see us start to do this, 
It's a pre-indicator. We just talked about that. That's an indicator that an old crap moment is happening. What are the things we do that put us at risk? That's one of them. You don't ever see it until it's too late. It's hard, but you got to, oh, look, this doesn't look good. You know what? I'm going to step around. I'm going to be aware. Well, we hope you enjoyed our tips today on how to get home safely and learn how to understand what behaviors might put you at risk. If you're interested in training with us and learning more about Krav Maga, you can go to Seaside Krav Maga Facebook page and find our contact information there and sign up for a class. And don't forget when you're looking back on coastlife.com, that video there has a little disclaimer. Okay, if you didn't catch it, go back and watch it. That is from Seaside Krav Maga. Yes, and it is important. <laughs> yes, it's very important. So take a look at that. And also don't forget that you can schedule private classes. Yeah. We say this every week, but it's so important to remember. It can be intimidating, so. It really can mm -hmm. be. And so to, to sort of ha be there with your friends and, yeah. and kind of learn with each other mm -hmm. as well. I think it just it puts everybody at ease a little bit. And, and Chris and Ted are great. Yes. And they will walk you through, I mean, so many scenarios that you might not have even thought could potentially be dangerous. So it is, it's all yeah. important information in a world that's become rather unpredictable. That is for sure. So don't forget, coastlife.com, get home safely tips. You'll find them all right there. And just call or go on Facebook um, is what Ted said you can do as mm -hmm. well if you have any questions. All right, don't go anywhere. We have like this much Coast Life left. You're not going to want to miss it. This segment of Coast Life was brought to you by Seaside Krav Maga. Don't miss any of your favorite Coast Life moments. Hang out with us on our socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, we're there. And don't forget, you can find full episodes of Coast Life at coastlife.com. All right, Coast Life, we are almost ready to let you go, but we just want to recap a couple of things that yeah. we talked about today. We, we talked about how sometimes yep. things just become your whole personality. Please, <laughs> please let us know. Don't flame us. We flamed ourselves enough. Yeah, we already did that. Yeah. We know our know. flaws. Exactly. <laughs> I want to know what becomes your personality, and if there's something that's so annoying you think people do when they make it their whole personality, I can think of a couple things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're couple all guilty. Things out there. <laughs> We're all guilty, but some are worse than others. Yes. Uh, we also, we just love how many cool people we always have on the show. Oh, I mean, yeah. we, we've had really cool photographers mm -hmm. on the show. I mean, JR, she's just fascinating to talk to. <laughs> so fun to talk to. Oh my gosh. We also want to give another big congratulations to uh, the Kitchen School graduates. Yes. How amazing was that? And that was their first graduating class, wasn't so it? So cool. Yes. And you know, one of the girls that was on here, we spoke with Victoria, and she was saying that, um, of course, she said it after we finished uh, recording and wrapping always up. Always happens. Always <laughs> happens. But she was like, you know, the greatest thing that came out of this was the friendships I made. Aww. I thought that was really sweet. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's such a cool program. Yes. I, I love that. It's, it's incredible. It's but amazing, yeah. We also always like to get you home safe yes. as well. Yep. So remember your safety tips and remember if you do need to review them, you can. They're all online. That's right. Yep. And just call Seaside Krav Maga in Lewis too. Just message them on it on Facebook. They're around. They'll help you set up any kind of class that makes you comfortable. Yeah, but it is about that time yes. for us to.